This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Talks in Major League Baseball draft, including its effect on the Arkansas Razorbacks. As we head to the McClarty Daniel Hotline, talk with Kevin Bohannon. We talked with him on Thursday just before the draft got started. And we talked with him just before the uh, second day of the draft gets started with round number three. Uh, yesterday was pretty exciting, Kevin. Um, and now the and now the picks come in fast and furious once we get back to it. Yeah, after the first round, five minutes in between, and it went pretty quick last night. They, you know, we were done by 9.30. And then the second round, two minutes in between. And now it's, it feels like 15, 20 seconds. So the, there'll be picks up that, that'll be on ESPN Plus, MLB.com, that will flash on the screen. And they'll be talking about somebody else. So it'll be a little bit a little bit crazier to keep up with today. Um, what did you think of the, the top overall pick? I mean, that's what everybody focused on so much. Uh, and after all the mock drafts, and they were, you saw Max Clark going first overall maybe, or Wyatt Langford, and the Pirates ended up not trying to outsmart themselves. I think they got the right pick. Yeah, and we talked about last week how MLB draft is the least scientific, and Everybody was joking about how the Pirates don't like to keep things simple. Well, they finally did. And, you know, when you got somebody like Paul Skeen, who's the best, and some eyes, the, and my eyes especially, the best uh, college arm since Steven Strasburg, and then Garrett Cole another name that he was mentioned with. So, yeah, kudos to LSU for having the top two uh, players picked and first time in program history ever. Um no, I don't know if they, there were already really any surprises um, involving there weren't. Arkansas yep. signees yesterday or or even the guy who went first uh, off the roster. I thought it might be Hunter Holland just because, of, you know, a left-hander with that kind of talent, but it's not a surprise to see Jackson Wiggins uh, go 60. He would have, just think of what Jackson could have done this year if he was healthy and how much more money he could have made, but... Obviously, he'll do well and probably get a seven-figure bonus. But as far as the signees, no surprises. But you did get some good news today. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as the signees yesterday, yeah, Aiden Miller, uh, Walker Martin, Nathan Donatello, and Kendall George, they're going to the pros. But, yes, they're great news this morning. I did talk to Gabe Gakel. Uh, he's a top 150 prospect if you look at uh, draft boards. He is, ranked number, he is ranked number 51 by perfect game overall in the, in the nation. Uh, he's going to be a Razorback. He's excited to be a hog. I talked to him this morning. He said, I actually pulled my name out of the draft a couple of days ago. <laughs> he huh. said, I didn't let it be out there, but I was, and I've talked to him a couple of times, you know, throughout the spring and everything, keeping up with him. And he said, I'm reaching out to you so you can, you can put it out there for the Razorback fans. So he's excited. Uh, and Razorback fans should be excited too. They're going to see a pitcher that works 93 to 95 with a very, very good breaking ball. Uh, it's going to be reminiscent of Gage Wood. It's, tight 75 to 77 uh spin rate has been clocked in peyton paul at range of 2800 to 3000 and that's really good that that's major league level right there so uh a little smaller 511 185 but he's a bulldog on the mound likes to compete uh, really excited to get him to campus and he's excited to be there Kevin, do a lot of these kids, that, that especially these kids that are going to get drafted in, in, in Josenberger and Holland and Wagner, will, will they make their major league debut for the teams that draft them? Because it's kind of a process. How long does it usually take these kids before they get up there and make their major league debut? You know, if you look at some of the guys that have gone recently, Kerstad went, you know, in that draft of 20, 2020, and he had a year setback, really. Well, I think he would already be there. So two to three years. Tink Kent came out of high school in that 2020 draft. He's projected to go. He'll be on the Major League squad next year. Mason Williams, kind of that four-year period. So three to four years is usually what they're looking at. Some of the guys like Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz, they may make it in a year or two. Uh, we've seen that happen quite a bit. Nine months later, they're in there. But they want to make sure that they get these guys. For for the experienced guys, and we thought Kevin Cox may have this, uh, situation to where, you know, he did get the double A pretty quick, and now he's just kind of been there, and he's in the back end of a bullpen. He may be called up, you know, if they get in a bind with the Padres. So, you know, anywhere from that three to five year period, if, if they're past that, there's one or two things that have happened: they've fallen off, or they've gotten hurt, and that's usually 
you look at Blaine Knight, unfortunately, Blaine Knight's not in baseball right now. Uh, the, he got released earlier this year after not making it with the Orioles. So uh, a lot of the guys that have recently come out for the Razorbacks are, are staying on that track. Caden Wallace is looking good right now. I know MLB.com has them projected maybe the end of next year uh, to get to the big club. How's Casey Martin done? Because I mean, I mean, I, I followed him for a bit coming out of yeah. uh, coming out of Arkansas, and it took him a while to get out of uh, out of Single A. He got a shot at Double A this year. Did he stick? Uh, so far, he has, and Casey really turned it around this season. Kind of started up slow. It's kind of that you know typical Casey, you know, chasing some pitches. Uh, fake discipline really wasn't there, but then he really took off, and he was hitting two eighty, two seventy six by the time I saw him. Uh, still in bags, playing a really good defense, and right now he's uh, playing shortstop over in, uh, for the reading team and the Phillies organization. Okay, well, and he's 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 one of my favorite. Who is um, who do you think Arkansas risks losing today in in not on the current roster, but in the incoming class that they've signed? So there's a couple of names that you need to look out for. Colin Fisher really shot up draft boards. He's a three-sport athlete out of Noble, Oklahoma, and he's 6'3", 195, left-handed pitcher, works 89 to 93, but he's a two-way guy, but he's going to go to Arkansas to pitch if he makes it there. But he really didn't play on the showcase circuit last summer, and then he really kind of took off. And he's one that I really am nervous about because scouts love him. Uh, I know I've talked to a couple of teams that saw him and a couple other Arkansas signees, and Fisher was the one that impressed him the most just because of his makeup, his athleticism. He played quarterback, threw like 38 touchdowns, six interceptions, some of those you know numbers that are video game-esque. So uh, he's one to look out for. Barrett Kent, uh, 6'4 righty out of Texas. He had three of the top seven velocities at the MLB Combine. All of them were 95.8 and above. He got up to 97. I don't know what his number is. I've reached out to him. I've uh, talked to him a couple of times, but I haven't gotten a feel on you know what may happen there. And then you got uh, Dylan Questad out of Wisconsin, another pitcher that was ranked top 40, top 50, kind of like Gabe Gekel. So uh, those are the three right there. And then the catcher uh, in the class that's uh, highly ranked, Ryder Helfrich, earlier this spring, it's pretty much a lock. He was going to go to the top two rounds. Uh, but the hit tool has kind of taken a step back. He's more power over hit right now. The defensive skills are good. He's got a really strong arm. The build is there, 6'1", 215. And you've seen recently, if you're wanting to catch, especially if they in electronic strike zones, you got to be able to hit as well. So they're looking for more well-rounded catchers at the at the pro rank. So that could aid Arkansas. I uh, don't know what his number is, but you know, they're getting into the – six-figure signing bonuses now. And I know a lot of these guys that were top 100 guys, you're selling yourself short. If you're projected in that top 50, top 60 coming out of high school, I wouldn't look for anything less than seven figures. So maybe his situation is different. But those are the three right there that I'd really look for today. Kevin, the MLB All-Star Game is uh, upon us. The Home Run Derby is tonight. I mean, that was a thing that I used to always watch. Will you watch? Will you check out any of this All-Star festivities? Man, yeah, and I watched the high school All American game the other night because I had my, my man Carson Wiggins in it, uh, and he had a really good outing, two strikeout uh, in an inning, and that was really big for him. So uh, the home run derby was something kind of like you, Matt. Uh, you and I grew up about the same time, and you know, watching King Griffey Jr. blast mm-hmm. balls at Camden Yards, and uh, we remember Josh Hamilton, the the prelude to Yankee Stadium hitting 29 around Mark McGuire hitting it on Waveland Avenue. Uh, those type of things are, are really big in my mind. So uh, the under, well, I say underdog. Adley Rutschman, I love his swing, and I've always loved it. So I really like him. And then uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he's kind of like his old man. He doesn't get he doesn't get cheated when he swings the bat. I've always remembered a Vladdy Sr. hitting the ball off the ground 410 mm-hmm. feet uh, to right center field, but how can you how can you bet against Pete Alonso, the two time winner? He's going for three. Uh, he would get up there and rarefied air uh, if he were to win it a third time. Yeah, Phil, I thought Vladimir could have played cricket if he wanted to. The way <laughs> absolutely he could have been absolutely. a golfer with how often he hits the ball <laughs> off the ground, man. Uh, more people are going to watch the Derby than the All Star Game, Kevin. I mean, I think there's more oh, interest yeah. in it. Yeah, it's definitely, just- and 
No, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, yeah, I was, finish your question. But, yeah, I think the, all, the, the All-Star game doesn't have really anything left meaning-wise. You know, it's, you know, yes, the Midsummer Classic, but there's so many things that have been taken away from it. And I watched some old highlights the other night of back in the 70s and 80s, and I used to get after it. It was a, a you know badge of honor to go out there and represent your league and your division. But now everybody plays everybody. You know, you got interleague and everything. So the you know the nostalgia is not quite there. I'm hoping they get some of that back. You think they could end up doing a thing like the NBA does, where you pick two captains and they pick the team? You know, I mean, it, there's a difference though. Is that Nobody's worried about somebody getting overused in an all-star game in basketball. In baseball, you get to handle pitchers with a certain amount of care. So that's the thing that I would believe. You're going to have to have a manager. I, I, I just don't know how you change the all-star game now to, to get more interest in it. There used to be automatic interest because people identified as a National League fan and an American League fan. Mm-hmm. And when they tried that's to right. artificially put that interest in with the home field advantage in the all-star in the world series people are like this is stupid this doesn't make any sense the players even hated it so i just don't know how you i don't know how you do it i and i'm there with you and mlb is is the last of, of the four major sports including nhl to where it actually looks like a real game it's not mm-hmm. such of course we don't even have a nfl all program whatever it was called uh Anymore, so and of course you got it's like an and one mixtape in basketball, and then let's see how many goals we can score without checking anybody in hockey. So you still got to throw it ninety ninety five. It was funny because I remember a couple of years ago Brad Penny came out of the bullpen pumping like ninety eight to one hundred one, and he usually sat about ninety three to ninety five. So there, you know, some of these guys that they're, they're still the competitive desire to compete against some of the best in the world at, on that stage to show that you know, I'm not going to get showed up. And that's you still see some of that stuff right there. I remember, you know, Torrey Hunter robbing Barry Bonds of a home run a few years back. So there's still some things, and I hope they kind of hang on to that stuff. I want to I want to end this just refocusing on the, on the draft here for a moment. Um, you know, you think of the kids that Arkansas lost from the signing class, and, and, and maybe an Aiden Miller or a Walker Martin would have been – you know, ready the moment they arrive on campus to play SEC baseball. We've seen other moments, other players that uh, Arkansas signs that maybe would have been a first-round pick that didn't necessarily uh, look the part immediately. That doesn't mean they're not going to get there, but these are 17-, 18-year-old kids. Is there anybody left in the incoming class, position player-wise, that you think can make an immediate impact once they get to Arkansas? I think the two you have to look at, based on where the roster is right now, are Ty Wade and Kate Smith. They're both Arkansas products. Wade is a, is a top 100 player by perfect game. And it, and I say that because both of them have hit tools that are advanced for their class. And I think they're under-recruited or underrated in terms of being on a national stage. Uh, both of them can hit. And Wade can hit for power. Kate Smith at of course, he was recruited as a two-way. He's not going to be a two-way guy. He's going to play outfield most likely, but he's going to be 90 from the outfield. He's an older guy for the class, so he's going to come in ready to compete day one. They, they both compete at a high level on the showcase circuit. I've been around them. They're great kids. They have great work ethic. Coach Van Horn always preaches we want those certain guys that are right for the locker room, and that's the kind of guys we like to get on campus and on our roster. And those two guys fit that to a T, in my opinion. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.